Pop culture didn't ruin anything. You guys are just stuck up. Hey, and welcome back to a video where I defend things people hate and have apparently the worst opinions possible. I'm your host, Tom Bergeron. So I was recently inspired to make this video by a couple of different videos, the first being a video by Quicken where she talks about if Stranger Things has been ruined by pop culture. It was a really interesting video. I liked watching it. I definitely recommend checking it out just to hear someone's perspective on that because my perspective is going to be a little different and I'm going to touch on topics that she didn't really touch on in that video, but inspired me to make this video. Also a video by John on four? four? I'll show his name somewhere here. You know the video. It's called I Like The Office. It has like 2.1 million views, so it's really popular. And it's a guy kind of like making fun of Tinder profiles. But a point made in that video is that like every guy in every dating app always has I Like The Office as some like wacky cool fact about them when like you're not special. Everyone likes The Office. That's not something new. My problem is not that a lot of people like The Office, it's the people who now hate people who like The Office or anything that's popular now. And that's always been a phenomenon of people hating things simply because they're popular. But what's frustrating, especially about something like The Office, and this video isn't going to be entirely about The Office, it's things in general. I'm just starting with this one because it's the one I'm most passionate about. Here's my issue with people who are mad about The Office being so popular. They're the same people who loved The Office back when they thought it was like a niche indie thing to enjoy. Despite the fact that when it was on air, it was a huge deal. It won tons of awards. The Office has never been indie or niche. It's always been a big deal. While it aired, it was a big deal. Then it kind of had an ebb and flow because of Michael leaving and some stories changing, whatever. And then the show ended and things kind of went down as it was on Netflix. Only a few people were watching it on Netflix and then it blew up where a ton of people were watching on Netflix. That's where we are now. I didn't watch The Office back when it was airing, mostly because I was too young when it started. And then as it progressed, I just never got into it because I felt like it was something that I'm like too late for. I would have had to have started from the beginning to understand it. And then when it became available on Netflix, I started watching it because to me back then it felt like everyone had seen it in my like group of people that I interacted with. And then lo and behold, I finally watch all of The Office and I'm like, finally, I'm in the end zone. I can finally make friends because I'm cool. And turns out no one had watched The Office. Suddenly I'm making Office references and jokes in real life and no one understands them. No one relates to them and I didn't understand. And now, seven years later, it feels like, people are finally reciprocating the joke so that they at least understand it. And people love to pride themselves on being into something that other people don't know about or other people don't watch or like or listen to, whatever, because it makes them feel unique. It makes them feel special. It makes them feel like they're maybe smarter. Oh, well, I get this type of comedy because I have a sophisticated mind that only catches on to the subtleties in this show that no one else can. <laughs> Those same people who were once avid Office fans are now the exact same people making fun of people who like The Office and making those quotes of like, I like The Office and I think that it's a personality trait. My guy, you did the same thing. It was just a few years ago before it blew up. You literally based your personality on liking The Office and the fact that it wasn't that big of a deal at the time. Another interest that people will get ridiculed for is liking the show Friends. Now, of course, the show Friends has definitely been over-marketed, has definitely been shoved down our throats. Feels like every store I walk into has Friends merch, especially like a Target or H&M. Here's the thing about Friends. It's not been ruined by pop culture. You are either just sick of hearing about it, so hearing about it makes you hate it, which, I mean, is valid, but it doesn't necessarily give you the right to criticize other people for liking it because they're not sick of it. They don't care that they have to walk by the shirts all the time in a Target or H&M or anywhere else. They still like watching the show sometimes because it's maybe nostalgic, they grew up watching it, or they just genuinely find it funny because it's not that bad a show. Drew Gooden did a video on comparing The Office to Friends, and while Friends did have less jokes per episode as The Office did, he still made a good compelling point that Friends really isn't that bad, so definitely recommend watching that video. So for the time that Friends was airing, it was a good show. People genuinely enjoyed it. It didn't oversaturate the culture in merchandise and constantly being talked about either in freaking memes online because that didn't exist at the time or just in general people putting it on profiles or anything. Basically the internet. If anything ruins anything, it's the internet. The internet ruins everything. We know this. And then there are people like me who try to make a living 
based on this thing that sucks the soul out of every human person. Friends is not the peak, the height of comedy. It never really was, but that doesn't necessarily make it a horrible show worthy of making fun of people just because they like it. Or honestly, don't make fun of people, period. But that's just... I gotta, I gotta break it down into bullet points because people don't seem to grasp that. You have to tell them specific things to not make fun of until eventually you capture everything and then people are like, oh, maybe I shouldn't make fun of people in general. So Friends back in its time started as just a sitcom to sit and watch and kind of relax, get a few chuckles out of. So obviously it is something that has aged well because it didn't just die off and then put on streaming services and people just didn't care. They saw the show and they're like, oh, I remember watching that when I was younger or with my parents or whatever, and they start watching it and they enjoy it and they continue to watch it and then they tell their friends they like it. But it's because it's something that's very vanilla, if I can say that, appeals to a large group of people. So basically one of my main points with something like The Office or Friends is that it can't be ruined by pop culture because it can't change. The Office ended and now it exists as this thing that's its own thing. It's not going to change, it's not going to continue to be created, it just is here. It's a finished product, ready for consumption, and nothing about it changes. So it can't be ruined by anything because it can't change. Friends ended at some point in time, so it also exists as its own separate thing, this little world that had a beginning and an end and nothing else. Nothing about Friends has changed from the time it stopped airing to now, on streaming services, even though none of this is really relevant, but there are some scenes in The Office that I see sometimes when it airs on like Comedy Central that aren't on Netflix and I don't get that. Netflix has no time constraints like regular broadcasting TV with commercials and whatever, so why are there like additional scenes in the televised version that aren't in the Netflix version? NBC explain. That's besides the point. Irrelevant. So. Those two things can't change. Therefore, they can't be ruined by pop culture because they can't be ruined. They're done. They're done cooking. They're done being made. They're here. You can't ruin them. Just because something is popular doesn't mean it loses value or is less entertaining. The thing itself has not changed. The only thing that has changed is your perception of it. Moving on. So, like I mentioned earlier, Quicken made a video about Stranger Things, so I wanted to touch on that because that is something that has potential to be ruined by pop culture. But I don't think it has yet to be ruined by pop culture. Yes, we are bombarded constantly with slogans on t-shirts everywhere you go, just like I said earlier in like Target and H&M, places that aren't merch selling places like a Hot Topic or a Spencer's. Despite the fact that Stranger Things has absolutely saturated the consumer market with things like t-shirts, pants, dresses, ketchup bottles, you name it, it's out there. Yes, it's saturated the market, but the show itself has not fundamentally been affected by pop culture yet. So seasons one and two were still kind of underground. People watched season one and we were really interested in it. And then season two kind of is what made the show blow up. And then season three was of course anticipated and has only continued to grow the fan base and the popularity of the show. But the thing with season three was it had potential to ruin the show, to derail it. I watched season three and I thoroughly enjoyed it and I don't think it has yet been affected by the popularity, by the fan base and what they might request the authors, not authors, screenwriters, writers, whatever, people who write things. What I'm trying to get to is a lot of times when things become popular while they're still airing and while they're still making new shows and movies, whatever, the writers can start to pander to their audience and that's what diminishes the quality of the show. It becomes a caricature of its former self. I kind of saw that with Friends towards the end, so I guess in theory Friends was slowly deteriorated by pop culture because I think the first couple seasons of Friends were the best seasons, the very first ones when everyone was still like, they had their little niches, their little things, but no one was obnoxious. And then by the end, everyone was obnoxious and it was on my last nerve. For example, I'm getting on a tangent here, but I liked Monica in the first season because yeah, she had her little cleaning quirks and whatever, but she was overall like a sane, normal human being. And then by like seasons four, five, and six, she got on my last freaking nerve. She was loud and she was like tightly wound. Calm down, you're stressing me out. 
I just start sweating thinking about it. I'm getting carried away. This video is way too long. Um, anyway, I don't think Stranger Things season three has been ruined by pop culture. I think it went the way it was planned to go. Um, without spoiling anything, the last episode may have been a little bit of just doing something for shock factor. That's kind of a cliche writing bit with a theory that I have about a certain character and how that character is not involved in the story right now, but I think will come back in the story. And the way I it, think it's gonna happen is kind of a cliche. Sometimes that's just gonna happen. It doesn't really matter about the cultural influence. You can't have a show without a few cliches in it. It's just more fun that way. But Stranger Things has potential to be ruined if the writers and the producers pay too much attention to how the culture reacts to it and then tries to change the show, alter it, or write it in a way that panders and patronizes the fans. This happened with a show called Sherlock. If you don't know, Sherlock was a show that ran for four seasons. It was on the BBC network and the first First two seasons were, in my mind, incredible. Cinematic masterpiece, incredible writing. The story was just so compelling. Every episode was like an hour and a half long, so essentially a movie, but you were so wrapped in it didn't feel that long because everything kept your attention. Well, everything felt very authentic. It was a modern day Sherlock, but it still felt very true to the character of Sherlock in many ways. Mr. Cumberbatch did add like a little bit of silliness to the character, but I think that was more fun and I thoroughly enjoyed how he portrayed Sherlock. The show began to unravel with season three. Because with the cliffhanger after season two, everyone just went absolutely bonkers um, after the cliffhanger of season two. And then it was like three years before season three came out because both actors were in The Hobbit. <laughs> it was long anticipated for season three, so people had a lot of theories, reasons why the show ended the way it did and what's gonna happen next and how people are gonna react, whatever. Tons of fan theories, tons of fan fiction when the show became kind of a big deal among a smaller group of people. It definitely wasn't a phenomenon like Stranger Things or The Office or Friends, but it was a big deal to a certain population of people. And unfortunately, the writers, Stephen Moffat, decided to ruin it <laughs> by listening too much to the fan base and then trying to literally just cater to them in season three. It wasn't as bad in season three as it was season four, but season three was definitely the beginning of the downfall of the show because the writers stopped putting in the effort that they did in the first two seasons of making it very complex and making it more realistic in a sense and something that feels believable. Instead, season three started to feel very fantastical and almost magical to the point where the suspension of belief became too much and you were like, oh, they're writing this just to try to make me happy and they're just writing things for the shock factor. They don't actually need this for character development. They're literally just writing it to make me feel surprised or excited or whatever. I don't care. I hate Stephen Moffat. He ruins every show that I like. I'm ranting about Stephen Moffat like it's freaking 2013 again. Log into my Tumblr blog later and talk about this. That was a show that was ruined by culture, pop culture, because it became popular. The writers got too full of themselves, Stephen Moffat, and ruined the show because their egos were too big and they felt they could do no wrong as long as they did exactly what the fans asked, which is not what I want. I don't want you to do what I ask. I want you to follow the story the way it was meant to be told. So to reiterate my point before, certain things don't fundamentally change. So in theory, they can't be ruined by pop culture because they can't be ruined at all. They're set in stone, they don't change. There are things that are continually changing and adding on, so those things have potential to be poisoned by pop culture. It just depends on how the writers and creators handle it. So Stranger Things, while I don't think has been ruined by pop culture, yes, it is popular, so people who felt like they were in on this indie thing might feel like it's taken from them in a sense, but I think we really need to let go of that being a personality trait. Did you know that liking things that are niche are not necessarily a personality trait? That was poor grammar, but I'm not saying that again. We put a lot of our identity into the things that we like, and that's not necessarily wrong. It can become toxic though when you put your identity into something that you like for the way it makes you appear or for the way the thing itself appears to others. So I like The Office. I put some of my identity, I suppose, in that because I like dry, sarcastic humor. I like slapstick humor. I like things that are so stupid that they're funny. So that's a part of me, in a sense. I don't like The Office because of how it makes me appear to others or how it appears to others. But for example, like I said earlier, some people liked The Office back when it was more niche in their mind, even though it's never been niche 
ever, but they put value in that they liked something that not a lot of people liked, that they felt like they were in on this exclusive club. And that isn't necessarily bad, but it becomes bad if that thing blows up because now you've lost that part of your identity. You no longer like this thing that is just yours. It is now a ton of other people's. And if that makes the show tainted to you, then did you ever truly like it? Or did you just like how it made you feel as far as comparing yourself to others or as far as your identity. Running from things that become popular in order to preserve this identity of only liking niche things is so just, that's just not fun. What's the fun in that? I think some of the coolest things in my life I've ever experienced is when I love something that a ton of other people love and being involved in like a huge crowd of people when we're all cheering for the same thing. And I know it's a bit of a cliche, but like when I saw the very first Avengers movie, I thought that was the coolest experience of my whole life at the time. I was like 15. I'd never gone to a premiere before. So I went to like the premiere, being in that theater and having everyone reacting to it at the same time, people cheering when cool things happened or everyone gasping and being dead silent when something bad or scary, whatever was going on, was such a cool feeling being in this atmosphere where everyone's emotions are ebbing and flowing at the same time. We're all in sync and we're all complete strangers. I am a god, you dumb creature. I will not be bullied by that. <laughs> or going to a concert. Yeah, if small concerts are really fun. I think those are my favorite kind of concerts, but nothing can quite match the feeling of being in a huge venue of like 20,000 people all screaming the same lyrics as you. These songs you listen to when you're alone in your room and then suddenly you're in a room with 20,000 people. What this year? And it just is a feeling like no other. And while, yeah, it's like, okay, this band is huge now, so I can't consider them my little niche thing, it's still cool to watch a band that you love get really popular or a show that you love get really popular and then get to experience it with large groups of people. I love videos, for example, of people reacting to things at the same time, like large groups of people who have nothing in common all being on the same page for just like a few moments. For example, there was a video that went around for a while where someone videotaped when they were watching Frozen and when it was like revealed that Hans was a villain. If only there was someone out there who loved you. <laughs> if only there was someone out there who loved you. <gasps> wait, wait. What the actual so That was the funniest thing to me and I love stuff like that. I love when a ton of people just all have the same reaction to thing or they all cheer for the same thing and they don't even know each other but in that moment you have a sense of camaraderie with the people around you this is kind of unrelated but like new york had that blackout recently and there's a video of people walking down the street and the lights cut on and all these people start cheering and it's like they're all strangers Him. We got, did you see they got him? Did you see, hey, ma'am, what's your name? Yeah, nice to meet you. They got the lights on. Basically my point is why can't we see something becoming popular as good? Why can't we be excited that a ton of people suddenly have a similar interest as us? Because now it's an icebreaker. It's a way to meet new people. It's a way to connect to strangers. It's a topic of conversation you can bring up when you're uncomfortable because odds are now that the thing is super big, you're probably gonna find someone in a public space that likes the same thing as you and you can talk to them and connect with them on that and then talk about other stuff and next thing you know, you got a friend. One last thing before I go, this is just a personal beef of mine, but I finally have this platform, this soapbox that I can step up on and if someone has made it this far into the video, thank you because you're about to get the angriest rant I have ever had. I am sick. I am sick to death of people making fun of girls for playing ukulele, liking the color yellow, wanting to be, you know, sweet little flower princess aesthetic blogs, tumblers, whatever. The last thing you should ever make fun of someone for is trying to learn an instrument. Are you kidding me with that? Yeah, the ukulele is easy. That's why it's a good instrument to learn if you're just starting to learn an instrument. 
I started learning ukulele and then it made the guitar easier because I already had some of the rhythm things that I could transfer over that would have been much harder to learn on guitar if I had just started with that. Maybe it wouldn't have been, I don't know. But I started with ukulele and I freaking love that stupid instrument, okay? I love it, it's small, I can take it places, I can't lug a huge guitar with me everywhere and you can get them cheap anywhere. Like, yeah, it's not quality for recording songs, but it doesn't matter if a girl just wants to sit in her room and play the same chorus of I can't help falling in love with you, the Tyler Joseph version. It doesn't matter, okay? It doesn't matter. Learning an instrument is good for your cognitive development, so that explains why your monkey brains are stuck at a 0.07 IQ score. In conclusion, you can't deem something bad just because it's popular. It's popular because a lot of people like it. And if a lot of people like it, perhaps it's because the thing is good. You have to use a little bit of critical thinking before you deem something bad just because it's popular. Look into the thing. Has the thing changed? Has it been altered by pop culture? If the thing is completed, no, it hasn't been altered by pop culture, just your perception. If the thing is continually being made, keep an eye out. See if it feels like they're pandering to you, or if they're sticking true to the story, or if it's a musician, if they're sticking true to what they've always done, or if they're just making music to get on the radio. You have to use your brain. So why don't you go take some time, walk outside, learn the ukulele so you can increase your cognitive development and uh, take a second look at things that you hate because maybe you hate them for the wrong reasons or you never truly liked them. You just liked how it made you appear to others or how it made you feel as far as how you identify yourself. Thanks for watching. Check the description for things like my Twitter where I try to be funny and am not or my Instagram where I also try to be funny and am not. Also linked below is my Cameo. Yes, you can book me on Cameo. I know none of you asked for it, but I'm generous and I give you things abundantly that you didn't even think to ask for. I also have a Patreon, another place where you can give me money. Patreon is really fun. I love the Discord on there. I'm always in there talking with you guys and having fun sharing memes or complaining about daily life. We are just friends in there and it's really fun. And they also get some exclusive content that I've been really bad with keeping up with lately, but I'm gonna get better at it because they got this video early. That's why sometimes you'll see comments that are a few days before you got to see the video. So also that link will be in the description. Tons of things down there, go look at it or not. Do whatever makes you feel good. It's not the popular thing to click on the description. So do it while it's still niche. Anyway, Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. I put my foot in my mouth.